Welcome back to Channel Family and another broadcast. Today we're in Yeremiah IR chapter 32 uh, and a marvellous chapter it is too. You know, friends, when I think of God's dealings with, with mankind, uh, the sovereignty of God, the mercy of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God, I think of um, all the purposes and counsels uh, I think of the scripture of truth. I think of the overview from eternity. Uh, I think of the type of Jerusalem, uh, type being the establishment of mankind upon the earth, uh, the lamb's wife, the redeemed, the woman, you know, the purpose of God and expression of nature, divine expression of love, grace, and mercy, and kindness. I think of all these things being established by way of redemption, by way of salvation. I think of uh, how the Yahudim very much are the picture of all mankind being put away out of the land, as it were, out of the Garden of Eden, uh, and then brought back in the millennial kingdom, uh, the imminent millennial kingdom. And as with the book of Yeshua Yahu, Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah's chapters often give a historical overview of all time. Um, they often give us specific doctrines that are found nowhere else in scripture. Um, the metaphors uh, and descriptives are precise definitions uh, of, of Christian doctrine. Of course, scripture having personal application, historical application, present and future application, national application, an application to the Yahudim, an application to the Bride of Christ. So there's many ways to, to understand the nature and character and personage of Elohim, Yahuwah, by way of study of scripture. Today's chapter uh, is a weighted tome. Uh, and it's a great description of mankind uh, under oppression, uh, experiencing redemption uh, in the scene of contrariety. So let's get straight to it. Jeremiah chapter 32. The word that came to Yeremiah from Yahuwah in the 10th year of Zedekiah. Melek Hayahuda. That year was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. The king of Babylon's army was then besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Yeremiah was shut up in the court of the guard, which was in the king of Yahudah's house. For Zedekiah, Melek Hayahudah, had shut him up, saying, Why do you prophesy and say, Thus saith Yahweh? Behold, I give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans. He shall certainly be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him mouth to mouth, and his eyes shall behold his eyes. And he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there shall he be till I visit him, says Yehovah. Though you fight with the Chaldeans, you shall not prosper. And Jeremiah said, The word of Jehovah came to me, saying, Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, thine uncle, shall come to thee, saying, Buy for thyself my field, which is in Anathoth. For thine is the right of redemption to buy it. And Hanamiel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the guard, according to the word of Jehovah, the Devar HaYawah. Logos of Theos, the vote upon God, the word of God. And said to me, by my field, I pray thee, that is in Anatoth, which is in the land of Benjamin. The right of inheritance is thine and the redemption is thine. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the Devar, a Yehovah. The word of the Lord. 
and I bought of Hanimiel my uncle's son the field which is in Anathoth, and weighed him the money, seventeen shekels of silver. And I subscribed the writing and sealed it, and took witnesses, and weighed the money in the balances. And I took the writing of the purchase, that which was sealed according to the law and the statutes, and that which was open. And I gave the writing of the purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Masiah, in the sight of Hanamiel, my uncle's son. And in the presence of the witnesses that had subscribed the writing of purchase before all the Jews that were sitting in the court of the God. And I charged Baruch in their presence, saying, Thus saith Yehovah Sevaot, the Lord of armies, the Elohim Hayashirel, the God of Israel. Take these writings, this writing of the purchase, both that which is sealed and this writing which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may remain many days. For thus saith Yahuwah Sevaot, the Elohim Hayashirel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be purchased in this land. And after I'd given the writing of the purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed to Yahuwah, saying, Alas, Adonai, Yahuwah, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. Who showed mercy to thousands and recompensed the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. Thou, the great, the mighty God, Yahuwah Sevaot, is his name. Yahuwah Sevaot is his Hashem. Great in counsel, mighty in work, whose eyes are open upon all the ways of the children of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings who has displayed signs and wonders to this day in the land of Egypt and in Israel, who among other men and has made thee a name as at this day. Thou who brought us forth thy people, Yashirel, out of the land of Mitzrayim, by signs and by wonders, you brought forth your people, Yisrael, out of the land of Egypt by signs and by wonders and by a powerful hand and by a stretched out arm and by great terror. You did give them this land which you'd sworn to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it, but they hearkened not to thy voice, neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that you command them to do so that thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold the mountains, they are come into the city for taking it, and the city is given over into the hand of the Chaldeans, that fight against it by the sword and the famine and the pestilence. And what thou hast spoken is come to pass, and behold, thou seest it. And thou, Adonai, Yehovah, thou, Lord Jehovah, Thou hast said unto me, Buy for thyself the field for money, and take witnesses, and the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. And the Devar Yahweh came to Jeremiah, saying, The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am Yahovah, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore thus saith Yahweh, behold, I give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And the Chaldeans that fight against this city shall come in and set fire to this city and shall burn it. And the houses upon whose roofs they have offered incense to Baal and poured out drink offerings to other gods to provoke me to anger. The children of Yisrael and the children of Yahudah have been only doing evil in my sight from their youth.
the children of Yasharel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith Yahovah. For this city has been to me a provocation of my anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even to this day, that I should remove it from before my face. Because of all the evil of the children of Yashterel and of the children of Yahudah, which they've done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests and their prophets, and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they have turned unto me the back and not the face. And though I taught them rising early and teaching, they hearken not to receive instruction. They set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to defile it. They built again the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause to pass through the fire their sons and their daughters to Molech, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Yahudah to sin. And now, therefore, Yahuvah Elohim Hayashirel saith thus concerning this city, wherever you say it has been given over into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will to bring them again to this place and I will to cause of them to dwelleth safely. They shall be my peoples and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me all their days for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not draw back from them to do them good. And I will put my fear in their heart that they may not turn aside from me. And I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will assuredly plant them in this land with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For thus saith Yahovah, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so whilst I bring upon them all the good that I have spoken concerning them. And fields shall be brought in this land whereof you say it is desolate without man or beast. It is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men shall buy fields for money and subscribe the writings and seal them and take witnesses in Veretz Ha Benyamin, the land of Benjamin in the environs of Jerusalem, and in the cities of Yahudar, and in the cities of the hill country, and in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the south, for I will turn again their captivity, saith Jehovah. Yeah, the Mi'ayah 3, 2, 1. Uh, verse 1, the Devar that came to Yadamiyah from Yehoah in the 10th year of Zedekiah, Melech HaYahudah. That year was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. So we have a situation here where Jerusalem, a giant city surrounded by big walls, was actually under siege. Uh, it was under siege by the Chaldeans who were there at the uh, command of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Now, to be under siege in those days would have been absolutely terrifying. Uh, difficult to describe in the modern era. Um, the nearest we have to it in modern times in Great Britain and Western nations is, would be World War II. Uh, which thing never physically touched the United States and mercifully uh, did not sort of have devastating effect on Great Britain, although there were many terrible bombs dropped and uh, quite a you know uh, 
hundreds of folk did die by German bombs during World War II. But mercifully, uh, Britain or, or America was, was not under siege at any time. So it's difficult to, to describe and the horror, particularly in those days with no telephones or, you know, uh, machine guns or things of that nature. And if a powerful army was besieging a city, it was usually just a matter of time before the persons within either starved or ran out of clean drinking water. Um, or the persons got in and slaughtered them. It was just a terrible, terrible thing to be under siege. And that is the conditions that this chapter speaks to and was speak um, in. So this is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah at a specific time um, during the oppressions of Babylon uh, as punitive judgment upon Israel and the Jews. So verse one is the will of God the Father, verse two has to do with the Son of God, the King of Babylon's army was besieging Jerusalem. The prophet Jeremiah was shut up in the court of the God. So this has to do with Christ uh, under judgment vicariously. Uh, in identification and substitution. We have Jeremiah shut up in the court of the God, which was in the king of Judah's house. So this all has to do with God through his son uh, being expressed and uh, Jeremiah vicariously suffering as it were, although he'd done nothing wrong, the sinless son of God. And uh, the king of Judah, King Zedekiah, had imprisoned Jeremiah within the besieged Jerusalem in his own palace, um, saying to Jeremiah, why are you saying this city is going to be overrun? And why are you saying I'm going to be taken into captivity? So, you see, this all has to do with the persecution of men against the Son of God. That's what's in view here. The Jews... Uh, didn't want to hear the word of the Lord in the mouth of Jeremiah. So they were punishing Jeremiah, even though the word of the Lord was the truth. Um, and so <clears throat> we, we have a scene here where, um, where um, Jeremiah is, is imprisoned because not only has he said that that city is about to be overrun, but that the king himself is going to be taken captive into Babylon. Um, so this is the Son of God in type um, declaring the accountability of mankind to the sovereignty of Elohim Yahweh when uh, Jeremiah prophesied this whole city, Jerusalem, is going to be given into the hand of the king of Babylon. And also uh, the king of Judah, Zedekiah himself, is going to be taken captive into Babylon and will speak with Nebuchadnezzar mouth to mouth and eye to eye. So this is nothing less than the Son of God declaring, all mankind will be entirely subject to Elohim Yahovah. That's what this is. And furthermore, that which remained of the rule of men will be brought into entire subjection to Elohim Yahuwah. So this, this was the word of the Lord. You see that the Jews didn't want to hear. So their response was, let's punish Jeremiah and lock him up. You see. That's very much a type of Jesus declaring the sovereignty uh, of God, the accountability of men, 
and that all kingdoms, all earthly rule is subject to the sovereignty of God. The king of Babylon um, is a type of God Almighty and a type, one could say carefully, of the devil. He shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon and there shall he be till I visit him, says Yahovah. Though you fight with the Chaldeans, you shall not prosper. So that verses um, three and four and five is the reason why they'd imprisoned Jeremiah, because he said the whole city of Jerusalem is going to be overrun by the Babylonian Chaldeans. Um, and also that the king himself would be taken captive into Babylon. So that was why Jeremiah was put in prison. But whilst imprisoned, in verse 6, Jeremiah further prophesies, the word of Yahweh came to me saying, look, this chap Hanamiel, which is Jeremiah's cousin, the son of Shalom, shall come to you saying, buy for yourself my field in Anathoth. So this is a type uh, of the son of God having the willingness to, uh, to perform eternal redemption, to obtain the salvation of all mankind. It's a unique type in scripture. Um, as regards to specificity, you would find a similar thing in the book of Ruth with Boaz being the kinsman redeemer and being willing to, to work eternal redemption. Um, and of course, he to buy the, the field, he marries uh, Ruth, who was a Moabite ass. It's a beautiful picture of redemption. Of course, Boaz um, was one of the, the, the uh, ancestors of Miriam, of Mary, the virgin, the mother of the Lord Jesus. Um, yes, so the theme of redemption is thoroughly in, in scripture, not least with the Jews coming out of Egypt. Um, but ultimately redemption is physical redemption and physical immortality that mankind has immortality once again as they had at the dawn of time and everlasting gladness, everlasting joy their portion and sorrow and sighing fleeing away joy, peace and gladness eternal So there's Jeremiah imprisoned, probably in fear of his life, from the Jews within the city who themselves are besieged by the Chaldeans at the command of the Babylonians. Um, and whilst there, the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah saying, Hannah Miel, your cousin, will come to you, um, saying, buy this field, for thine is the right of redemption to buy it. So this would have been to do with the family that um, Jeremiah had the right. He was next in line in the family to buy a particular field before it would be put on the open market. Um, so that, that you know it was a it was a family. Uh, I suppose it was patrimony. Really, it was it was the it was just handed down that um, families would have the opportunity to purchase. Uh, fields and properties and other things before anyone else. And so Hanimiel came to Jeremiah, um, according to the word of the Lord, and said, Buy my field, I pray you, which is in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, for the right of the inheritance is thine, the redemption is thine, buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of Yahovah. And I bought of Hanimiel, my uncle's son, the field which is in Anathoth, and weighed him the money. 17 shekels of silver. So this speaks of the redeeming blood of Christ 
Um, silver in scripture speaks of redemption. Gold in scripture speaks of that which is redeemed, the Lamb's wife, the church, the congregation, the body of Christ. So there was Jeremiah. Uh, he was imprisoned in the king's palace in Jerusalem whilst the city was under siege. But he's able to buy this field um, and he subscribes the writing and sealed it and took witnesses and weighed the money in the balances, as was the tradition in those days, so that persons knew that redemption had been wrought, that the purchase had been made. Um, so Hanamiel purchased the, uh, the field in Anathoth. Now, that was the region where Jeremiah and his family were from. It was the region in Israel where the priests lived. And Jeremiah, uh, like Ezekiel, was uh, of the tribe of priests. Not only was he a mighty prophet, he was also a priest, which is why the writings of Ezekiel and Jeremiah have a peculiar um, or a specific type of holiness in their revelation. Um, that's not any better from one perspective of other prophets, don't misunderstand me, but it does have a certain element of uh, tenacity and purity and specificity in the councils of Elohim that you won't see in other uh, writings of the prophets. Oh yes, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, Yes, they were both from the region of Anathoth. Um, and of course, um, Jeremiah buys this field. Now, this is very much the parable um, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of God was shown the treasure in the field, and he had to buy the whole field in order to get the treasure. The treasure, of course, is the redeemed, his wife, uh, the beloved. Now, so he gives the writing of the purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah. Now, Baruch uh, is Hebrew for blessing. You'll often hear me say, Baruch, Havar, Hashem, Adonai, Yahuwah. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord Yahuwah. Baruch is blessing. And so Neriah has to do with the glory of God. Uh, so this very much has to do with Christ in time upon the earth, doing the eternal will of God as the pre-incarnate Son of God manifested in time. So it's the most beautiful verse, is verse 12, and of course it's Jeremiah 3, 2, 1, 2. I gave the writing of the purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Masiah, in the sight of Hanamiel, my uncle's son. And in the presence of the witnesses that had subscribed the writing of purchase before all the Jews that were sitting in the court of the guard. And I charged Baruch in their presence, saying, Thus says Yahuwah Sevaot, the God of Israel. Thus says the Lord of Armies. The Elohim Hayasharel. Take these writings, this writing of the purchase, both that which is sealed this writing which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may remain many days. For thus says Yahuwah, Sevaot, Elohim, Yashirel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be purchased in this land. So this is a most beauteous uh, declaration of the covenant of God, the most beauteous declaration of the purchase of all mankind and creation by way of redemption of the Son of God through his uh, finished work of salvation 2,000 years ago in Israel. This is absolutely to do with the crown rights of King Jesus Christ, the authority of the Son of God, So it's, it's the, the promised redemption, the promise of immortality for mankind. 
Thus says the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be purchased in this land. So that's the reality of the whole planet being ruled over um, from Jerusalem, from Israel for a thousand years imminently. And after I'd given the writing of the purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed to Yahuwah, saying, Alas, Adonai, Yahuwah, behold, you made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. The great words. Alas, Adonai, Yahuwah, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and thy stretched out arm. There's nothing too hard for thee. You show mercy to thousands. You recompense the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. You, the great, the mighty God, Yahuwah, Sevaot, is his name. Great in counsel, mighty in work, whose eyes are open upon all the ways of the children of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You've displayed signs and wonders to this day in the land of Egypt and in Israel and among other men. You've made their name as at this day. You brought forth your people, Yisrael, out of the land of Mitzrayim by signs and by wonders, by a powerful hand and by a stretched out arm, and by great terror. You did give them this land which you have sworn to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. They came in and possessed it, but they hearkened not to thy voice, neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that you commanded them to do, so that you have caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold the mounds, they are come to the city for taking it. The city is given over to the hand of the Chaldeans that fight against it by the sword, by the famine and the pestilence. And what thou hast spoken is come to pass, and behold, you see it. And thou, Adonai, Yehovah, Lord Jehovah, you have said to me, buy for yourself a field for money and take witnesses. And the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. So what that speaks of is, is that Christ in resurrection had many witnesses. He, he was seen by hundreds of men and women and ate with them and spent time with them. Uh, but nonetheless, the earth was still under, generally speaking, under the curse. Uh, and of course, within two and a half decades of the physical ascension of the Son of God, Jerusalem, Israel was, of course, besieged for months uh, and the Jews were brutalized by the Roman invaders. Uh, well, the Romans had control of the land, but they didn't have control of Jerusalem at that time. So they, they besieged Jerusalem. And, of course, uh, Israel ceased to be a country for 1870 years until 1948. The Devar Yahovah came to Yeremiah, saying, Behold, I am Yahovah, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus saith Yahovah, Behold, I give this city into the hands of the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans, I suppose, in time, would be a picture of the demons oppressing the professing servants of Elohim Yahweh, the professing Christians. That's what that would have in view. The world, the flesh, and the devil uh, oppressing the disobedient, the rebellious. God says, I'm going to give this city, which is in type mankind, into the hand of wickedness. Uh, and the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, he shall take it. The Chaldeans that fight against the city will come in and set fire to it, burn it. And all the houses where idolatry and wickedry was done will be destroyed. For mankind has only been doing evil in my sight from their youth. The children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, says Yahovah. The children of Israel and the children of Judah have been doing only evil in my sight from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, 
saith Yahovah. For this city hath been to me a provocation of my anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even to this day, that I should remove it from before my face. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel, of the children of Judah, which they've done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They've turned to me the back and not the face. Though I taught them, rising early and teaching, they hearken not to receive instruction. They've set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to defile it. They built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause to pass through the fire their sons and their daughters to Molech, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. And now, therefore, Yahuwah, the God of Israel, saith thus concerning this city. Whereof you say it has been given over into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. So here comes the promise of blessing, the promise of mercy in the midst of wrath, the promise of deliverance, friends. Jeremiah 3, 2, 3, 7. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries whither I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath. I will bring them again to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. They shall be my peoples, and I, I will be their God. It's a great verse, friends. They shall be my peoples, and I will be their God. It's quite interesting in Scripture. Um, the Scripture speaks of false gods. Uh, demons that are not gods um, in some realms of the world we have persons like for example the uh, prime minister and president of china they're almost deified the same with places like turkey and many other nations thailand they, they venerate their leaders you see and they're almost deified as it were the popes of rome who are the nothing less than the emperors of Rome exerting spiritual and temporal rule uh, as much as they can. That's what the Pope is. He's simply an emperor seeking to maintain control over men spiritually and uh, temporally, as in, as in through governments, which the Pope has and continues to do. Not so much the Pope, but the army of bishops and men underneath the Pope, uh, the Vatican the tiniest city on the planet, the tiniest country on the planet, the Vatican. Um, I have a friend that's currently in Rome at the moment. Um, they, they were in the Vatican yesterday. Was it the day before yesterday? I think it was yesterday morning they were in the Vatican. Um, so yes, yes. So the deification of men, you see. And so Yahovah has to be your Elohim, you see. You can't have Jesus as your king if you're not his subject. You can't have Jesus as your Lord unless he's your master. You see? And if you want Yahovah to be your Elohim, then you have to be subject to Yahovah. I'll give them one heart, one way. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the headship of Christ, really. That's what that is. I'll give them one heart, one way that they may fear me all their days for their good, for the good of them and their children after them. So this is a, it's a promise of the reality of the thousand year millennial kingdom. Uh, but it's also a promise from the overview of eternity over time of God through his son guiding and directing and healing and teaching men and women uh, to be goodly, uh, lordly and kingly in their dispositions to show forth the nature of love, light, grace, power and mercy in their lives. That Elohim Yawar may be glorified in all their thinkings, doings and speakings. 
I'll give them one heart and one way that they may fear me all their days for the good of them and for their children and of their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will not draw back from them to do them good. And I'll put my fear in their heart that they may not turn aside from me. And I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will assuredly plant them in this land with my whole heart and with my whole soul. Beauty has promised, friends. I will to rejoice over them to do them good. And I will assuredly plant them in this land with my whole heart and with my whole soul. It's great scriptures, friends. And you can see the character of the verse. You, you don't get that anywhere in what we call the New Testament. You simply don't get that. Elohim Yahavah referring to his whole heart and his whole soul. But here, that is the language of God, the language of God Almighty um, towards mankind, that he will establish Israel, establish the Jews, uh, establish mankind with his whole heart and his whole soul. That's principally in the resurrection of the Son of God 2,000 years ago. That's a promise, you see, friends, of physical Christianity. See, Christianity is physical. It's the physical immortalization of mankind. It's what Christianity is. It's the greatest love story, the eternal love of God. But says Yahweh, like as I brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I've spoken concerning them. Fields shall be bought in this land whereof you say it is desolate without man or beast. It is given into the land of the Chaldeans. It's a promise of blessing um, in an earth that's been under the curse and bedeviled and deluded. Uh, it's the promise of blessing, peace, pardon, and power, reconciliation, and immortality. Men shall buy fields for money and subscribe the writings and seal them. They'll take witnesses in the land of ben Yamin, and in the environs of Jerusalem, and in the cities of Yahudah, and in the cities of the hill country, and in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the south. For I will turn their captivity, says Jehovah. So it's a great thing, friends, to, to contemplate that this has already begun to happen. A nation was born in a day, 1948, as prophesied by Isaiah, um, two and a half thousand years earlier. Israel was re-established as a country. Um, but yet, for 2,000 years now, Israel has not had a king. Uh, it's not had a priest, a high priest or a prophet. It's not had a blood sacrifice. Um, it's not had a central synagogue. Um, and still doesn't, friends, because Israel, the Jews, have rejected their saviour, the king of the Jews, uh, the risen Lord Jesus Christ, the living, breathing word of God. Uh, and so for that reason, because they rejected their king, they rejected the prophet, uh, they rejected their saviour, they rejected their creator, their creator rejected them. Uh, and one day all flesh will see the son of God standing as the lamb slain in the midst of God's throne. It's a wonderful thing to think that just as Joseph stood before his brethren, uh, he stood before them as the second in control on the whole planet under Pharaoh. And he had power over all life. And his brothers were scared because they knew they were culpable and responsible for his sufferings. So mankind was scared at the revelation of the Son of God. And rightly so, for the Son of God has authority over all flesh. All power in heaven and upon earth is given unto me, said Jesus. And so Joseph, at the end of the book of Genesis, he had power over the life of flesh. He had the supply of food and the authority of Pharaoh. A most unusual type Pharaoh, certainly a type of bedeviled men, 
and also one could carefully say a type of God the Father, appointing Joseph as having control, the Son of God. And um, we have the, the great words of Joseph, you meant it for evil, but God, God meant it for good. So one day, the Lord Jesus will say to, uh, to mankind, yes, I was crucified for all of you. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Christ, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Wherefore, here can us, beloved, Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and he set down the right hand of majesty. Lest you be wearied in your minds, you have not yet strived and resisted unto blood in striving against sin, friends. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, the captain of your salvation. All your names were upon the captain's log that day, friends. That was carried up the Via Della Rosa. All your names were written upon his hands, friends. Stay strong. Stay under the blood in the spirit, beloved Hirkinus. We'll be back soon with another broadcast. Baruch, Havar, Hashem, Adonai, Yehovah, Elohim. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord.